bookshelves. I have a secret weapon in making these this time around, and stick around to the end and I'll tell you all the things that I wish I had known before I started, and some things that I learned in the process. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you've never been here before, I am on a quest to make tabletop terrain that is very universal, that is going to serve multiple purposes, and so that means making a lot of generic things. And so today is the first one that I'm making. Let's check out the video and see what I learned so you don't have to. As per usual, I found some trash at work and I thought I'd take them and try to make something out of them. These are actually little trays for primers for making bullets. And these to me looked like tiny little bookshelves and they really appealed to me because unlike bookshelves that you see people make out of just XPS foam, these actually look to scale to minis. What I see are like a lot of three tiered bookshelves with books that would equate to being like one and a half to two feet tall on a normal person. And I like these because they're teeny tiny shelves and they looked really appropriately sized for individual units. So I got some foam core here and I peel off the paper and I give it some texture with a wire brush. I then start measuring out individual pieces. What I'd like to do is do a back, two sides, a top, and maybe some trim on the front to cover up the blatant untexturable front end there. So I take a yardstick and a pencil to simulate planks on the back end. I measure them out and then eventually they get glued on there. Through this process you'll see me cut out several strips, some for each individual side and for the tops as well. And I'm able to texture these with the wire brush, score them with the pencil to give them kind of a deeper grain in certain spots because foam core is notoriously poor at texturing compared to regular XPS foam. You can get a very shallow indentation in there, but once you get a primer on there or you know the black magic Mod Podge mixture, then some paint on there, it kind of looks like you've filled in a lot of spots and it's not that good. Now for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to demonstrate how I did one, bearing in mind that I had about 12 of these to do overall, and once you see just how time consuming it was, I'm really glad I decided to do it this way because even once I'm done with this video, I'm still going to have some steps to take to finish these up. So I hustle through and glue a bunch of them together and let them dry and by the time I'm done working on the last one, the first one is ready to start being tinkered with again. I then turn my attention to the individual planks that will be going on the tops and the sides. These on the ends will take texture very well and they look very weathered and worn, which is good. And as you can see, I've got six or seven gazillion of these to do, so I do what I can and uh, turn off the camera so I can just hurry up and do them. Now the sides and the fronts are going to get a little bit different treatment. What I'm doing is I'm running a small score down the length of the piece here and I'm only going about halfway in. I'm not trying to cut through it and the idea is that this is going to hug around the corner after I slice it down the center. And I'm using an X-Acto knife here to carefully slice down the center here, and it's times like this I wish I had a prox on, but really bad. And you know, if I was doing this for a couple pieces, this wouldn't be an issue, but this quickly became very time consuming, and I thought, well, okay, well this isn't so bad, I'm only going to be doing this project once, you know, and then I'll have a bunch of bookshelves, but even then it took a little bit of motivation to make sure I did this right the first time. Once I'm finally able to get this free, and even though I cut through it, I'm able to glue it back together and it's not a big deal. These 
pieces fit nicely around the outside edges of the bookcase and it kind of gives a nice completed look to it just that way seams aren't exposed and it allows me to kind of bring that look all together. After I get all the sides attached I'm able to set them up one at a time, let them dry a little bit. I think what I've got here is looking pretty good so far. Then after a while I let them dry and they are all stuck to my board so I have to undo them and at this point I can start doing the tops. Here I just put the completed back sides and front of the piece on more foam core and I measure out the top. I then glue the tops on and I begin working on a black magic Mod Podge arrangement doing a base coat, strengthening up the foam a little bit so it doesn't get damaged later on when in use. And it should be noted that a lot of these didn't come white, that is the plastic parts. I actually took these outside initially and primed them first. Now to begin work on the books themselves, this is a very narrow space on these shelves, so I had to handcraft books for each individual shelf. I thought of a couple ideas to do this, and some of them worked out better than others. My plan was to use the leftover XBS that I trimmed off of the side panels for the bookshelves and wrap pieces around it to make them look folded, and then paint those and have those be the books that way I would just slip in and trim to fit. This proved to be very, very difficult. So like some sort of tough guy, I decided I'm going to cut down a piece of XBS foam lengthwise. This, I felt pretty good about this, I going into this. I thought I'll just give myself a big sheet of foam that I can just fold over another piece of foam and we'll paint it, wham bam, problem solved, this will be super easy, we'll super glue it so it glues fast, and this was not the case at all. It did not work. I tried gluing them together and letting them dry but the super glue was melting it and they would sometimes come apart. I would paint these pieces and some of them turned out okay. It, like, it looked like genuinely this would be a good solution, but also there was sort of just a lack of detail when I just painted it with regular paint. And so I decided I had to cheat, y'all. There's this guy on YouTube who made bookshelves similarly and he printed out basically these templates that you see right here that... He basically just folded around, and I'll leave a link in the description for that individual's video. I forget his name. And again, the issue I had here was not that wrapping the foam in printed paper would be an issue, but it's that my bookshelves were so tiny and minuscule, unlike his, which is kind of the typical size you would see in a project like this, that I couldn't even scale mine down. And I ended up developing a trick, which you'll see in a few minutes here. And while that dried, I decided I would start painting on some of these bookshelves to see what kind of colors I would like. Thankfully, the inside of the bookshelves themselves were really easy to paint with a larger brush. I could just get a big glob and just get it in there. I wasn't too concerned about that being real detailed since the majority of it would be covered with stuff anyway. A little more paint on the side, a little more of this, and then I did it again, and again, and again, and I did it for all ten of my pieces. One reason why this took far longer than I expected, and one reason why I didn't actually finish it. Like I said, I completed one bookshelf, and the other ones I'll kind of wrap up in my own time, and maybe make any improvements I see fit that I can do with basically what I'm left with. So this is what the final product looks like with the book's texture glued to the foam. With a little bit of trimming, I should be able to fit them inside the shelves here. And so what I do is I cut out the textures into individual strips and I place the narrow end of the foam on the spine of the books and I fold them over or get them ready to anyway. And eventually what I do is I glue one side, fold it over, glue the other side, fold it over. And then I just cut little slices out of it like it's some sort of cheese loaf. And then I start one by one just cramming them in there. 
and it took a little time, but once you get the right size down and your slices right, it goes pretty fast. Plus, the benefit of using white foam core is that you don't have to do anything if you make these pieces stick out a little bit. The foam is white, and so the pieces uh, look like white pages of a book, which is nice. I've also got a couple little knickknacks and doodads, some metallic pieces and things I want to add in just to give it a little bit of flavor. A lot of people use beads in this situation to make things like pots and urns and potions and things like that, but I simply just don't have anything small enough to fit on these shelves, which I'm in hindsight seeing as a problem because it doesn't give me much variance. So I cut more and more pieces and I will have to make many, many, many more of these in order to fill out my other bookshelves. But one of these strips is about enough to populate a single bookshelf. And although these textures are enlarged for larger books and when you put them on smaller little things like this, the textures don't really make sense, but when you look at it at a distance or you're not looking too closely at it, I think it looks really good. A little bit of glue in these metallic pieces fit well on the shelves, and a couple of these things were made to actually fit in these, so it's just a spot of glue to keep them secure, and those are all set to go. I'm going to take a look around and see if I can find anything else that I can stick on these to maybe give it a little bit more diversity, but even if I just populate them with books, I'm going to be pretty pleased with that. These books are not glued in place. The tension of the foam in between the shelves is enough to hold them in place, and anything that's not, if there's a book that's loose, I can just wedge it in between two sturdier books. And there we have it. Now, I told you that there would be a couple things that I would share with you that I learned. One thing that I learned is that I like to do things the hard way, apparently. Another thing that I learned is just because it seems like it's going to be simpler doesn't necessarily mean it will be. These little shelves, I haven't decided if this was a good idea or not. These little shelves seem right to scale and to make XPS shelving this narrow or this small would be a huge undertaking. Taking a look at these on the turntable, these look pretty good. So tell me if you guys liked it. Tell me what you think. How have you guys made your bookshelves? I would love to hear if you guys have any strategies, so tell me in the comments below what you think. Tell me what you have done in the past and what would you have done different? Do you think I screwed up or do you think I made a good call in trying to salvage some of these plastic pieces to make bookshelves? I would be really curious. So subscribe, let me know what you think, and stay tuned to my channel because soon I'm going to be doing reviews of assets for dungeon masters, such as books and utilities and aids. So stay tuned, I'm going to be branching out a little bit, trying some new things, and I look forward to seeing you in the comments.